So now we're going to take a look at binomial critical regions. Now these are slightly different to looking at the normal two tail and uh, T2, T2 tail and normal one tail in the fact that the binomial distribution is a discrete distribution, which means that we have to work a little bit diff differently. We need to try and find the values until we find one inside the critical region, which would be our critical value, and one outside the critical region, and this would be the first value at which we accept H0. And these two numbers that we find need to be consecutive. So we can make sure that we've definitely got our critical value, the first value in our critical region. So we're going to have a look at some examples. So here we have a batch of potatoes is to be sampled for potential frost damage. A random sample of 40 potatoes is selected uh, and tested at a 5% significance level. The claim that 15% of potatoes will show evidence of frost damage. Find the critical region for this hypothesis test. So what we're wanting, if we're going to dist binomial, there is an inverse binomial button, but we need to be careful when using it. The reason why we need to be careful is that this only shows areas that are going to the left. So in this case here, we're wanting 5% because it's a 5% significance level and we're looking for a decrease, we're looking for less than, so we want it to be on this side here. So we're going to have a look, so we want our area to be 0 0.05. Our number of trials is 40 because we have 40 potatoes that we're selecting and the probability that we're using is 0 0.15. And this gives us a value, okay? Gives us a warning message, gives us a value of three. Do not just put three down, okay? We need to do some tests. This gives us a good starting point for where we should test. So as I said, because we're looking on this side, now we're gonna go into dist binomial and we're gonna go into BCD because we would use BCD if this was a hypothesis test. And because we had three, we're gonna look at less than or equal to three to start off with. We know it's less than or equal to because we're looking at less than 15% and we're wanting our critical region to be on the left-hand side here. So we're gonna start off by testing the probability that X is less than or equal to three. So our lower is zero, our upper is three, our number of trials is 40 and our P is 0.15. Remember, if you've got an older version of this calculator, it'll just have X, N and P. And because the calculators then only do less than or equal to, you just put 3 in for your X. So that gives us 0 0.13016876. So this is obviously more than 5%. So this is not my critical value. So instead, I'm now going to try 2. There we go. So probability of X being less than or equal to 2 gives us 0 0.04859866. This is less than 5%. So if this was our number line, 2 would be inside our critical region and 3 would be the first value at which we reject we accept H0. And these two numbers here are consecutive, as I said before. So that means that our critical region... is going to be when x is less than or equal to 2. So we're going to have a look at another example. This time we have tulip bulbs are sold in packs of 56 mixed colours, red, yellow and white. A random sample of bulbs are obtained and put into packets and tested. At a 5% significance level, the claim that 20% of the bulbs sold in such packets are white tulips and we're trying to find the critical region here. So this is a two-tail test. It doesn't say increase or decrease. We're just seeing if it is 20%. So this time, if I draw my number line again, we are wanting to have it so that we have uh, half of our significance level below and half of our significance level above. So we've got a 5% significance level. So we're going to have 2.5% at the bottom end here. And we're going to have 2.5% at the top end here. Again, if you're wanting to get a good starting point, you can go into this binomial, inverse binomial. Remember, as I said before, this only does areas going to the left. So I can start off with this bottom value here. So if I put an area of 0.025, a sample of 56 
and we're testing 20%. So that gave me six. So I'm going to start off looking at six for this send here. So let's have a look. The probability of x being less than or equal to six. So back into BCD. Again, remember if you've got an old, older version of the calculator, your x will be six. But here uh, it's zero for our lower and six for our upper. It will automatically update this if you have used the inverse binomial function to get a good starting point. And that gives us 0 0.0510.1928, which is obviously not inside our critical region. So I'm going to try five. I'm going to try a smaller value. And the probability of x being less than or equal to five gave us 0 0.02136136 which is inside our critical region because it's less than 0 0.025. So I'm going to have 5 here and I'm going to have 6 here. But I haven't finished yet. I've got this end here to care about as well. Again, you can use the inverse binomial to get a good starting point. However, because we're at our top end here, and you'd have to do this if you had a one tail where you were looking for an increase, because... Uh, we know that we're going to have 2.5% going to the right this way. Going to the left, we're going to have 0 0.975 because that's 100% take off 2.5%. Our number of trials is still 56 and our probability is still 0 0.2, which gives us 17. So now I can have a look at 17. So let's have a look at greater than or equal to 17. So with the newer versions of the calculator, you can put 17 in your lower 56 in your upper. Remember, if you've got an older version of this, so we are doing the probability of x being greater than or equal to 17. If you have an older version of the calculator, you're going to have to change this to 1 minus the probability of x being less than or equal to 16. And then 16 would go in for your x, and you'd have to do 1 minus that to get the probability of x being greater than or equal to 17. And that gives us 0.0. .0 four three two zero nine three nine which again is too big we want it to be less than 2.5 percent so let's try greater than or equal to 18 and that gives us uh, 0 0.0218 so that is inside our critical region so we'd have 18 here and 17 just wasn't big enough so that means that this time our critical regions would be if x was less than or equal to 5 or x was greater than or equal to 18. You have to show this change here. So if you've noticed, each time it gave me one that was a bit was the first accept h naught value not the first reject h naught value which I need for my critical value to find my critical region. But you have to show this change to show that you've understood that the value that you are taking when you are saying your critical region, that you have shown that it wasn't six. You have to show that part of the work in. So I'd like you to now pause the video and give these two now you try questions go. Okay, so hopefully you paused the video and gave the two now you try questions a go. For this first one, we have a train company claims that more than 40% of trains arrive early at their destination. A random sample of 150 trains are sampled to investigate the company's claim at a 10% significance level. Find the critical region. So, because we're saying more than 40%, we're wanting our 10% for our significance level to be on the right hand side here. So that means that if we were using the inverse binomial to get a starting point, because this only does areas going to the right, our area would be 0 0.9. We're looking at 150 trains and our probability is 40%. And that gives us 68. So we're looking at greater than or equal to, so we'd have to do x is greater than or equal to 68, which gave us 0.1613326 which is too uh, big of an area. So then we're looking at x being greater than or equal to 69, which gave us 0 0.0789757, which is less than that. So that means our, that's our critical value. So our critical region is going to be when x is greater than or equal to 69. 
Remember, if you've got an older version of your calculator, you're going to have to be doing 1 minus the probability of x being less than or 68 here. And here you'd have to do 1 minus the probability of x being less than or equal to 67 here, because your calculator can only do less than or equal to calculations. For the second one here, we've got the probability that a student at a certain school passes an exam is 0 0.8. A new teacher is app appointed and takes uh, the next group. The new teacher has a group of 20 students and the head teacher wants to investigate at a 1% significance level whether this teacher's results are different from the school's pass rate. Find the critical region for this test. So this is a two-tailed test at a 1% significance level. So we'd have to half that for both sides because it's two tails because it's just saying different. It's not saying improved or decreased. It's just saying different. So we need to half that 1% to give us 0 0.005 and 0 0.005. Then, again, if you wanted to use the inverse normal to find on this side, we'd have 0 0.005. Oops. We have 20 pupils and the pass rate was 80%, which gave us 11. When we looked at less than or equal to level 11, that gave us 0 0.00099818, which is too big. And when we did less than or equal to 10, we did 0 0.00259948, which is less than that. So that's our critical value is 10, which means our critical region is going to be x is less than or equal to 10. However, when we're at the other side, because remember this only does areas going to the left, we're going to have to do 100% take off 0 0.005, which gives us 0 0.995. And then that gives us 20. And when we had a look at x being greater than or equal to 20, that already gave us an area that was bigger than our 0 0.005. And because we only have 20 pupils in the class, we can't go any bigger than that. So actually, we don't end up with a critical value at this top end, which means that we only have one critical region, which is at this end here. Now, this is quite interesting because that actually means that this is not a very good hypothesis test. Instead, this person should only be doing a one-tail hypothesis test because there's no value, there's no amount of pupils that this teacher could make pass that would make the head teacher think that they had increased on the uh, original pass rate so it should actually just be a one tail test to see if they did worse uh, because there is only critical values at this bottom end which is why we only have one critical region thank you very much for listening